In this week's episode, I have the privilege of doing an interview with Steve Snyder. He is the author of the book Shot Down, which is based on his dad's story as they were shot down on their eighth mission uh, over in, in Belgium. Now, he was on the B-17, Susan Ruth, and he'll tell you in his book how the B-17 got to be named, but I got to tell you, this is an amazing read. It sucks you in, it draws you in, and you are actually going through the trials and tribulations that each of the airmen that went through on that fateful day as they were shot down behind enemy lines. So uh, it's incredible. Steve, you did an amazing job. Uh, I love what you do, and I look forward to seeing you at, at air shows and everything else as we go. Hi, my name is Steve Snyder, and I'm author of the book Shot Down, the true story of pilot Howard Snyder and the crew of the B-17, Susan Ruth. Uh, Howard was my dad. He was the pilot. Uh, he and his crew were shot down over the French-Belgian border on February 8th of 1944. And the book goes into detail about what happened to each member of the crew and also about all the courageous Belgian people that risked their lives to help them. Uh, the first half of the book kind of builds up to the day that the plane was shot down. And then the second half of the book is all about what happened afterwards. Uh, they were shot down on a mission to Frankfurt, Germany. They dropped their bombs successfully, but their bomb bay doors got hit by flak and they couldn't get them back up. And as a result, that caused a drag on the plane. They started losing airspeed and they lagged behind the formation the B-17 formation heading back to their bases in England. And as so often happened to uh, stragglers, they were singled out by two German Fock Wolf fighters who came in for the kill. And in the ensuing air battle, the Susan Ruth was shot down. Uh, two of the crew members uh, were killed in the plane. Uh, the other eight uh, crew members were able to bail out. Um, and actually the two German Fock Wolf fighters were both shot, shot down as well. Uh, one was piloted by Siegfried Merrick. Uh, his plane crashed and he was killed in the plane. And the other was piloted by Hans Berger. Actually, the gunners on my dad's plane shot down Hans Berger. So they both shot each other down, which was kind of unique. Uh, but he bailed out and uh, uh, made it through the, through the war. And uh, so the book goes into detail about talking to what happened to each, each one of these guys. Something different happened to, uh, to each guy. Some became POWs. Uh, my dad and another member of the crew were able to uh, evade capture for seven months. My dad was actually missing in action for seven months, but he evaded capture. Uh, after he bailed out, he came down in some trees right at the French-Belgian border. And fortunately for him, a couple of young uh, Belgian men came to his rescue before the Germans got to him. Um, this happened uh, early afternoon. Uh, his parachute got hung up at some trees. He was dangling uh, 20 feet off the ground and couldn't get down, but they got a ladder and a rope from a nearby farmhouse, uh, got him down. They told him to stay put because uh, they thought it was too dangerous to try to move him during daylight. So uh, that night they came back and got him, took him to the farmhouse uh, nearby. Uh, actually, the two men were Henri Franken and Raymond Durvan. It was the Durvan farmhouse. He just stayed there one night because they thought it was too dangerous for him to stay there any longer than that with the German patrols combing the area. So that night, a uh, Belgium customs officer, Paul Tilcan, uh, came on a tandem bicycle and took him to another location. And after that, my dad was moved from place to place to place. How long he stayed at any given location depended on how brave the people were who lived there and how dangerous the Belgium underground thought it was for him to stay there. He might spend one night at a house or might spend six weeks. Uh, and the people who hid my dad or any down airmen for that matter were unbelievably courageous people. And they risked not only their lives, but the lives of their friends and family because of the German secret police, the Gestapo found out they would be arrested, tortured, and either sent to a concentration camp or shot. And some of the Belgian people that helped my dad and other members of his crew did meet that fate. But it was very stressful for my dad as well. Uh, he was almost uh, discovered by the Gestapo uh, on a, several instances, which are described uh, in the book. Uh, after all, you know, his plane was attacked, it shot down, you know, with the plane's burning, he has to bail out, he comes down in a foreign country, has no idea where he is. 
uh, doesn't know what happened to his buddies on the crew, can't communicate with the U.S. military, uh, and here he's being helped by total strangers. They can't speak each other language. Uh, my dad had a little French-English dictionary in his escape kit, uh, so he kind of referred to that, and any one of these people helping him could be a collaborator and turn him over to the Germans. And finally, he got tired of hiding. Um, uh, word came that uh, the Allies landed at Normandy on, on D-Day, June 6th, and he decided to get back in the fight. Unlike most airmen, uh, before he went into the Air Force, he was in the Army, uh, in the infantry, for a year up at uh, Fort Lewis, Washington. So he was trained and knew how to fight on the ground. So he decided to join the French resistance, and his Belgium helpers tried to talk him out of that because it was way too dangerous, they thought. Uh, he could die fighting against the Germans, or if the Germans captured him, he would just would have been shot on the spot as a, a terrorist uh, or you know, infiltrator. But he, he felt it was his duty to get back in the fight. He knew the uh, U.S. armies would be coming up uh, after D-Day, so he joined the element of the, the, the French resistance uh, called the Mackey. And uh, Mackey was made up of independent small guerrilla groups all around uh, France. There was about 20 in his unit that he joined, led by a French lieutenant uh, who had escaped from a German prisoner of war camp. And uh, they basically harassed the Germans. They sabotaged railroad lines, disrupt communications, uh, attacked convoys, assassinated German officers, and they got their instructions so from the British over the BBC through coded messages. And they were also supplied by the British through airdrops. And my dad said that the information that the British gave them was unbelievably accurate. If they said a German patrol was coming down this road at this time on this day, sure enough, they'd show up. And that was a result of the British cracking the German Enigma code and knowing everything that the Germans were up to. Uh, so my dad fought with the uh, French resistance for a couple months, and there's uh, several encounters uh, described in the book that he, they had with uh, the Germans, which are pretty exciting. And then finally, uh, seven months after his plane was shot down on September 2nd of 44, a uh, word came that there were Allied troops in a little by nearby village of Trelon, France. So he walked into town, into the village square, went up to an army major, actually was an element of Patton's Third Army that would, would have come up through France after D-Day. He identified himself, they interrogated him to make sure he was who he said he was, and then he got back to, uh, to England. But the, the book's just not about my dad, it's about what happened to each, uh, right. each member of the crew. Uh, of the 10-man crew, five made, made it home, but five did not. Uh, two were killed in the plane. And then three of the guys that bailed out uh, were killed a couple of months later on the ground through uh, tragic uh, circumstances. Um, so it was uh, a labor of love. I've been to Belgium six times, uh, been to many of the houses and farmhouses where my dad hid, where he stayed with the Mackey. Uh, there's a memorial that was built to my dad and his crew in the little village of Mackenois, Belgium, just north of the, north of the uh, French border. Uh, the Belgian people are wonderful people. Uh, still to this day, they're so grateful and so thankful for the Allied uh, countries and the U.S. servicemen liberating their country from Nazi oppression and uh, occupation for four years from 1940 to 1944. And they do a great job of educating their younger generations uh, for, of the importance of remembering and always being thankful because they lived through the the horror of those four years. So uh, I wrote the book uh, actually several years ago. I retired from my career job in 2009. And at that time, I just wanted to go into, uh, learn more about my dad's World War II history. My parents had kept a lot of material from the war years. I just wanted to go through that and kind of organize it and learn more details. And there were two items that were really significant. One was a diary that my dad wrote about his plane being shot down that he wrote while he was missing in action. It's just riveting. It's in the book. And the other were all the letters that my dad wrote to my mother while he was stationed in England before he was shot down. And he was really candid in these letters. He talked about what bombing missions was like, what life was like in the base. My dad was with the 306 bomb group based at Thurlai, England. 
uh, what life was like in London and England at the time, uh, escapades of his, him and his crew. And uh, I was just fascinated by those letters and it just became my passion. And I started doing all this research, going on the internet, spending countless hours uh, downloading declassified military documents. Uh, I went on a quest to find uh, relatives of all his crew members to see what information that they could provide me. I read book after book about the air war over Europe. And then finally, three years into my research, I just came to the conclusion that the story of my dad and his crew was so unique and so compelling that it needed to be told. Uh, people needed to know, know about it. So I de decided to write a book. And uh, it's changed my life. Uh, it's had a lot of success. It's won uh, over 25 book awards. And uh, now I, uh, except for this year uh, during COVID, uh, normally I travel all over the United States attending uh, air shows, signing copies of my book. And I do a lot of PowerPoint presentations to all sorts of organizations. Um, I'm past president of the 306 Bomb Group uh, Historical Association. I'm still on the board. And it's our mission and it's my mission doing all this is to uh, remember, honor, and educate. Uh, to remember the air war over Europe, uh, to the honor the men who fought it, and to educate uh, the, the general public about it, especially younger generations. And as I said, it's, it's changed my life. I meet so many fantastic people, meet veterans all around the country. So it's been a, a real blessing for me. Now, Steve, and I have, what you do is very similar. We preserve history. If you didn't take the time and want to know more about, about your dad, uh, or I didn't take the time and when I got to know Colonel Williams and wanted to know more and became fascinating. I, I've been, always been fascinated with the B-17, but once I started learning about the men, it was absolutely earth-shaking a difference. Because at that point, that's when men and machine were one. They flew the B-17 or, or any plane back in the day. Now the computers are flying the plane yeah. and the pilots are going for a ride. Yeah. They have the landing gear and they pull it up. Pretty much not anything against pilots. You're doing a great job. But this was back in the 40s. Um, and one of the most satisfying things I get, people always ask, what's the most rewarding part about what I do? And I would have to say the best part about my job is I meet these amazing veterans. I hear their stories. Um, they become more family than just a veteran. Uh, we, we go to their birthday parties and we have lunch with them and, and we stop by their house just to say hi. And they say, well, what's the worst part about your job? I get to meet these amazing veterans that I hear their stories and I do this, but our friendship is limited because of their age. And, and we're losing them faster. So preserving history and, and the stories. And, and I'm sure you have so many stories that people are just, my dad was there. And because of your book, they may be researching their family's history and military records. And instead of just knowing my dad served or my great grandpa served in the war, my dad did this or my uncle, my, my mom, did this and it is just awe on how powerful because if we don't preserve history it's lost absolutely yeah i i am so fortunate and so blessed to know so much about my dad's history from him from the other crew members that survived and uh, i probably wouldn't have written the book if it wasn't for two belgium gentlemen who were young boys during the war they were greatly affected by it they saw firsthand the atrocities committed against their friends and family. And later in life, they became local historians. They interviewed all these Belgian people and members of the Belgium underground about events that took place involving my dad and his crew, and they documented their testimony. And they gave me unbelievably detailed information about events that would have been lost forever without their dedicated research. So I owe them a, a, a great debt. And when I go, go around the country and talk to uh, people, I, I find out that the vast majority of people know very little about their vest. You know, whether it's a, a, a child, a cousin, you know, a grandchild. Uh, and so 
I try to educate them about where they can go to, to find information. But one of the, the best compliments I can get is when people read my book and they go, you know, my dad was in the 8th Air Force. And, you know, after reading your book, I now have an appreciation for what those guys went through, what flying combat was like and what they had to endure. And they just gain a much greater appreciation um, for their, their vet and for all those guys in the 8th Air Force that, that, that served their country. It, it, it's incredible. And, you know, I, I am truly blessed to be able to, to talk with veterans and to help preserve history. And everybody says, oh, you're going to be very successful. You know, the show's going to take off and you're going to make all this money and be successful. <laughs> and I said, well, that'd be nice because money pays bills. But success is not the dollars. We, do, when, we, we don't do family, what we do for the money. Yeah. We do it for the passion and for the love. And when a family member comes up and says, thank you, that's my success. Because maybe now they're looking into their family's World War II history. But when they say, thank you, I didn't realize. My dad was an airman. I had no idea. Um, that's my success. And everybody says, have you been successful? I said, over and over again. Simple thank yous or when people come up and give me a hug uh, or when I attend a, a funeral and great grandchildren give me a hug and say, thank you for being my grandpa's friend. It, it doesn't get any better than that. Yeah, yeah, that, that, that's, that's why we're doing this. And but, you know, I, as I mentioned, I speak to all sorts of different organizations and there's, but the vast majority of the groups that I speak to know very little, if anything, about the 8th Air Force, the Air War of the Europe or the B-17. So it's, you know, it really opens their eyes, um, even if they didn't have any relative that uh, fought uh, in the Air Force. So, yeah, it's a great educational tool, you know, just try to just get the word out and uh, just make people aware, aware of what those guys did and the sacrifices that they made to preserve freedom. Because at 25 missions, that was no easy task, uh, especially in, in 43, it was just absolutely, the average number of missions before they didn't come back was eight and try to, to reach that 25 uh just amazing that they went up day after day knowing right. uh, black thursday can you imagine being there and you come back and there's 600 bunks empty on, on your base actually my dad and his crew were, were replacement crew to black thursday uh the second schweinfurt mission my dad reported Schwein, second schweinfurt was october 14th of 43 and my dad and his crew reported to the 306 bomb group on October 21st of 43. So they got there right after that. My dad was shot down on his eighth mission last. <laughs> just, just a statistic. <laughs> yeah, he got to the average and that was it. <laughs> yeah, and this is Steve's book. I want to show the cover. I've read it and Steve, it, like I was telling you before, when I read it, I was in the story with each of the airmen. And some of the tragic endings was like, what? No, there's, there's no way after all this. And your dad, his story to be able to fight with the resistance. Instead of hiding, let's go out, let's just finish this. Um, yeah. Absolutely yeah. a true American hero. Uh, another thing I'll, uh, I'll say is probably the most amazing thing during the process of writing the book is that uh, I found Hans Berger, the German Luftwaffe pilot that shot down my dad's plane, and I interviewed him for the book. Wow. Fortunately for me, he became a translator after the war and speaks perfect English. In fact, Hans is the only person in the shot down story who's still living. Uh, all the, the, the crew, my dad's crew are gone. Um, all the Belgium helpers are passed away. But Hans, he's 96 years old. He lives in Munich, Germany. And uh, we become good friends. Uh, I've been over to Munich a couple times to, to visit him. Uh, 
and uh, he was shot down three times himself and, and made it through the war. Most all of his friends were were, were killed. But uh, that was a, a, an incredible experience for me to, to find Hans because all my dad knew and all the 8th Air Force knew at the time is that his plane was shot down by two Falkwell fighters. And that's the, all I thought I'd, I'd ever know. Uh, but finding him, then I found out that my gunners on my dad's plane shot him down. You know, he bailed out. And uh, he said it was unfortunate that they had to be shooting against each other. But, you know, he was like the U.S. Airman. He was just a young guy, 20 years old, fighting for his country, trying to do a job and trying to stay alive. So that, that was, that's a, an amazing thing to find him and get then his side of the story as well. Absolutely, because he, he, was, he was fighting for his country, just like our guys. Here's your job. Go do it. Yeah. Uh, and people don't realize that the Nazis weren't all Germans. Very small group that just held fear. The Germans weren't all Nazis. Right. That's, yes. Yes. <laughs> Germans weren't all Nazis. Three percent, four percent. But the fear that they had, the rest were just German soldiers doing their job. Yeah. Uh, and it's, yeah, it, it's just sad. But. I mean, have to honor all, all service personnel. They stood up for their country. Um, and you know what? Your dad is true and his crew, American heroes. Everybody who ever took to the skies, anybody who ever put a uniform on, whether yeah, it's peacetime lucky. or wartime. If it was peacetime, you know what? You got lucky. But you would have went if, if you were called over. And that's, that's what makes America so great. They were the greatest generation, without a doubt. Absolutely. Now, uh, I received a, a call this morning um, from a daughter. Her dad is turning 95 years old. Staff Sergeant Joe Gossen flew 57 missions with the 15th Air Force. All right. Uh, his birthday is actually Monday, August 31st. He was the 15th Air Force, the 93rd Bomb Group. And he's turning 95. So, Joe, happy birthday. Happy birthday, Joe. That's uh, my wedding anniversary. So we well, have congratulations as well. <laughs> <laughs> now, happy Steve, where, where can we get your book? Tell everybody where they can get your book. Okay. Well, most people buy books on Amazon. So you get it on Amazon. It's available as a hardcover book, a uh, softcover book, and then uh, the print book. There's over 200 time period photographs, so you can visualize everything you're reading about. But then it's also available as an ebook, any electronic book form, and then also available as an audio book. If anyone wants an autographed copy of, of the hardcover copy, they can go to my website and order one. My uh, website is stevesnyderauthor.com. Snyder spell S N Y D E R. stevesnyderauthor.com. And also on my website, um, there's a ton of research information. Uh, it's just not about my book, but there's videos of veterans on there. There's links uh, to historical films and footage and movies. And uh, there's a lot of information to, uh, that people can uh, peruse to learn about the air war over Europe and the Eighth Air Force. All right, very good. Steve, thank you for your time. I love your book. Uh, and I'm sure once this COVID is over, we'll see each other at different air shows again. Uh, but until then, please stay safe. God bless your family. And thank you for your time.